If you think of it, would you mind coming back? And bring the meeting to order. On. Is there any uh, changes or adjustments, additions to the agenda? Yes. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. At our August meeting, we uh, agreed that this meeting would be devoted strictly to um, setting priorities. Okay. And so I was surprised that this um, agenda didn't reflect the will of the board. Um, you want to bring that up under item six? I'd actually like to uh, strike item six and uh, set a meeting. I don't think it's productive to jam that in between. Actually, I'm going to recommend next Monday. I like the board that. Mm -hmm. I think so. I'll just slip that down in here. Thanks. Is there any other additions or changes? I've got an estimate on a project that I want to inform the board about on uh, tree removal on Cemetery Road. Tree? At the, uh, was that Plot Cemetery? Okay. Anyone else got anything? Okay. Uh, board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for September 16th and September 23rd. I can, I was on the 16th, I was here for only a part of it, so on that I would, I would be not participating in the vote. So you're recusing yourself on the 16th? Yes. Okay, do you, does board want to approve these as a slate or do them individually? Um, uh, I think individually. Okay. So I, I guess I'd look for a motion on the 16th. I actually, I wanted to, um, I sent a request kind of late this afternoon to both of you to have number 12 on the 16th um, written out verbatim, word for word. Okay, number 12. Do you want to put a motion on the floor first or with that is your motion? Um, no, what do I want to do? Um, well, probably we ought to get the motion on the floor first okay. to approve it. Okay. So I guess I would look for a motion to approve the meeting minutes for September 16th and a second. And then we'll. Could the motion just be to approve them with the addition of that change? It could be if she wants to. It's, it's up to her. Uh, it's just, I think it's going to probably involve a little discussion. On exactly what you're looking for and what item number 12 is. I apologize, you don't have the printed minutes in front of you. You don't. You're going to Would need you want to make that as a motion? Sure. Did you make your own copy? So the motion is to approve September 16th, with the exception of, well, actually, how can we approve them if we have Right, that's okay. true. No, never mind. So I guess. Oh, yeah. table. I'll open it up the board's discussion. Does the board want to uh, do as Kyle suggested with item number 12, or does the board want to approve as presented? And if there's no motion, I guess we would look for a set of meeting minutes from item number 12 for base. And I should like to Sorry, so Thank you, Donna. I think that's understood. Uh, so I guess next I would look for a motion on September 7th, uh, 23rd. Uh, yes. And I I would defer to what he said. I, I remember there was three foot discussions, 10 foot discussions. If his definition is what it was in his email, I would defer to that because I don't know what the definitions are between a trail and a bike path. And I don't know about the rest of the board, but did everybody? I forwarded his email out, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, does everybody feel comfortable with those changes that Walter identified? Yes. That's fine. No objection. Okay. Now that is a joint meeting minutes, but we'll we can approve as a select board. Mm -hmm. and were those the meeting minutes that said Nat said something that actually Doug said? Oh. Well, well, I have I have to change that because that was just okay. So that's that, that's like a, a clear mistake. So right on. Uh, we have to vote on that. Thanks. I I have a suggestion that um, 
with regard to Matt Young of Ascent, where it says he joined the meeting. I think you should say join the meeting by phone. For it, it you say by phone with regard to everyone else. Oh, and I, I didn't say that to him. No. Oh, okay. Well, I can. I can do that. Okay, what's the board's pleasure? I entertain a motion. With or without Walters changes and with or without. I move we approve them with Walters changes and my changes by phone. Okay, we got a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. A motion second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, same five, saying aye. Right. This is for the joint minutes, right? You're yes. yes. Aye. Right. Those opposed? Okay, we'll move on and we'll have the 16th meeting minutes. Whenever you're done, we'll send them out. Okay. Charles, where you get the floor? Yeah, the only thing I have is. Um, For a motion from the board. What's the board's pleasure? Community Bank at 2.2 or Union at 2.4? Okay. I move that we go with Community Bank. Community National. National. Okay. And what was this for? Are the Daniel Truck? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion, second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? I got all the bank with paperwork and can sign up the Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other items? No. Anybody got any questions for Rosary? If not, uh, the broadband committee report. I'm not sure. Are you giving it or? They, yeah. Well, I, I think it was more the board's request for kind of a status. Okay, not the, yeah. Uh, I don't know, if Rob, if you were giving that or if. Uh, I can. Yeah. I should have given it. When was the last time you guys were up there? I think the last we had any update was when the pilot program was being first announced and explored. Okay. That's where I remember it. Anyway. So I think we're still there. Uh, no movement has happened with that. Um, we met with Brian about. Yes. To, so the the mile and a quarter project when when we asked people to or we asked who was interested in the project and we had people sign up in the four mile area uh, near that project. So MC Fiber would like to do all four no four uh, all four miles at the same time rather than just do one and then come back later and do the other whatever. That section down has nine total miles, I think. Um, so they were looking for funding to complete the other three miles to, so everybody that was interested could in come. Um, so we met with Ryan about the revolving loan fund option, which was. Uh, shop to it by LCPC, and then uh, I know they're meeting with their own funding options. They like to do all nine miles, really, all at the same time. So they were looking at a funding option for the entire south side. Um, at our last meeting, we also the actual 
committee has no official stance on the test file. So that this is happening is sort of outside of the broadband committees. You know, we have an interest in how it's going to be, how it's going to act as a test file, mm -hmm. but we had we we voted to not take an official stance on on the test file because we don't know if this is the way that we want to go. We we're, we're waiting for the survey responses that we were collecting to give us a clear picture of whether or not people wanted to pursue a uh, private organization or something more, you know, collectively owned by the town like this one type of option. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, I'm confused. The test mile, this is a report from the broadband committee, but the test, the test mile or four miles or whatever is not part of the broadband committee? We have, we're taking an interest in it simply to see how this um, company performs. Yeah. But since it's being privately funded, and private business just expanding Johnson. That's you know we can kind of we're not really you know really have a hand in how this is going. Um, so we we're we're we're, take, we're we're going hands off on this. Just we're going to take a wait and see approach. If they do a good job, then that might be something that we can then approach them. But you know right now because this is you know our our committee's stated purpose is um, last mile uh, coverage to every house in Johnson. So this is we're, we're treating this as a pilot for how does this company do, um, so that we you know, we might look at them as somebody to contract with. We do decide to try and push out to last mile, and if we do, um, you know, need to use them as as the contractor for that. But you know, this isn't really yeah. The test mile is something we'll wait and see for us. So the test might would detract from your work as a committee, or could it? I don't think so. I mean, if, if NC Fiber decides to move into Johnson of their own volition, then that's great. Um, our concern is, again, the last mile, that we don't want a situation where NC Fiber provides to 60 70% of Johnson, but then there's still a 30% population that is it's just not served. Um, and so our our mission would be to make sure that we have the last mile coverage, no matter what the solution is. So how do you get there? Uh, well, we have a couple options on that. Um, you know, really the only way we could do that would be through some sort of municipal um, solution, whether that's um, a co-op. Um, so that's what they're working. The word we're using is like when the uh, municipalities go in together. The district. District, yes, sorry, thank you. Um, so, like, we can look into a district solution. Um, we can look at contracting with the company and just basically making it clear that, like, you know, we'll subsidize and do whatever to make sure that we have last mile. The other option, of course, is there's a law that is hopefully going to be repealed, and all um, signs point to it being repealed that would allow the electric co op. To also act as a um, an internet service provider, and if that were the case, then they would be able to use their own poles. You know, any any house basically that is on the electric grid could become, um, it, you know, they have the mechanism to also be uh, provided with fiber. So. so you you went door to door, signed people up, as I recall, for or for, for interest, and I went door to door to. Tell people I was having a meeting and if they were interested to come. They actually signed up when they came. Okay. And this information is going to MC Fiber and they want to do more than your test. Yes, lines? MC Fiber has provided a proposal to do the whole thing. Um, and I can, if you guys are willing to sign an NDA. So they provided it to us and any of the board members that were willing to sign an NDA. What's an NDA? Uh, Non-disclosure agreement. Okay. Uh, so that we couldn't share it with possible competitors. Yeah. Uh, they would. They would. They would. You could see the proposal. So I don't know. I know I signed the NDA and looked at the proposal. I don't. I don't know who else did. Uh, but I can send you the NDA and the proposal uh, if you guys want to read it. 
they have a plan to do the whole town if, if you know, if you want them. I mean, they're willing to do it privately themselves on their own. They're willing to work with the town uh, as a contractor, so the town owns the infrastructure, and they're the contractor that manages it. They're, they're open to a lot of different situations. Um, it's, it's, and it's in the proposal. You know, like the, the I think that explains it better than I would like to. So if, if they wanted to enter Johnson, they could make the contract with the co-op, they could get the full right, and then it's not like uh, the Public Service Board cedes territory to anybody, does it? No, there's no regulation of, of internet service. Uh, the biggest concern that we have with the Z5 are doing this kind of on their own without any sort of contract with the town is that NC Fiber has stated very clearly that they don't wish to be in direct competition with Comcast. So that's, you know, the village basically would not, you know, we would end up in a situation where, you know, you wouldn't really have a choice. If we are, your, your, your choice of who you would be able to use would be entirely limited on whether or not you're in Comcast territory or in NC Fiber territory. So we would prefer it if, you know, we could have full town coverage for Fiber so it wasn't a situation where, you know, I personally, I have Comcast, I would prefer to have fiber. You know, I know that the, the studio center is kind of in the same boat. If MC Fiber is saying we're, or MC Fiber says we're not going to go to, I think it's, I mean, it's basically off like the village. And then, well, they'll look at last. Yeah, well, well, they said, you know, I think that they, they basically said that they have no interest in being with Comcast. And so if there is no, there, if there's nothing holding the feet to the fire on that, then we have to assume that they are not going to try to compete with Comcast. That they'll just say, all right, you know, they're served by Comcast, and they're not going to go in. So, I agree. Which isn't last mile. That's not, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, which is? Which isn't last mile if they're leaving out the Comcast area. I mean, the whole village. Uh, we did a lot of uh, surveys um, for the Tuesday Night Live, the last couple of Tuesday Night Lives, um, helping people take the survey. We don't have the information on that yet. You has been the one who comes through getting that, getting the actual data with the data. And uh, yeah, we're basically trying to feel out what the town's opinion is on what they value in something like this. You know, would there be a sense that we would want to get some skin on the game for, you know, money wise to get? Um, a municipal option going. Um, you know what? What do what do they value? What do you need it for? What do you value in, in high speed internet? Um, so I'm just trying to get a feel for what the lower town is. Mm -hmm. Do you? Are we supposed to talk about the council pieces here? Uh, I had that. It, it's, but I think there was some curiosity about uh, kind of where we stood with. Uh, LCPC gave this survey to all the towns. Uh, yeah, I attended that meeting in late, and I didn't do the survey because I said that I thought that the select board it should, it should come from the municipality rather than you know a random member of the select board. Uh, and I thought it should be you know be interested in how the committee thought that we ought to answer it. Right. So I. I did a survey. I don't know if Charlie did. Um, you guys have the same survey. You guys have right, I think you got it in your email. Uh, from about the meetings and that stuff. So why don't we go over the questions? Sure. So uh, it's asking us what services we might be interested in that LCPC can provide. Uh, First being assistance with creation of a broadband committee or support for existing committees. Uh, so with the broadband committee, would you having access to LCPC and some planners there, especially folks that are familiar with grant process, would that be helpful for the broadband committee? It might be. There's very few grants that are going to be available. So. Yeah, uh, that's kind of the problem that we're aware of. Uh, is we have Comcast covers too much of the, the area for us to qualify yeah. for any rural development. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. But 
at least maybe invite somebody for one meeting and see. We could. I mean, I I talk to us in DC occasionally and ask them. To, I usually ask them about grant opportunities or money opportunities, and, and that's what I use it for. But yeah, they could come to a meeting. I'm not sure. Yeah. I did. I mean, kind of ask them in that context. We'd like you to come and talk to us about funding opportunities. Yeah, it's going to be a short. Yeah. <laughs> um, development. Would you like your assistance with development of a broadband survey for residents or businesses? Uh, would you like your assistance with a provision of broadband maps that show current broadband service? Uh, we already got that. You can get it for free online. Yeah. So. Um, meetings with current and potential internet service providers about their plans for the community. We could. I mean, John and I have talked to uh, quite a few of them. There's Consolidated, there's Comcast, there's MC Fiber, there's, there's Kingdom Fiber. Other than that, I don't know of anyone else to contact. Um, uh, MC talked to the whole committee. Uh, Charlie has talked to Comcast. I talked to Consolidated. I mean, we can have him come in and talk to the whole committee, but I, mean, I think we know what the information is. So I said no to that one. Robert, Charlie? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's pretty much it. Is that we, we've been, we've been pretty uh, how about a feasibility study to gauge the viability of broadband deployment? So I think it might be a little bit more yeah, detailed planning that they're offering. Yeah, that's I think something that we could potentially. We could. Yeah. I, I mean, that's just it. It's like it's it's going to be premature yeah. for. In my opinion, so I think that one, there's like three options right there. Uh, uh, not for this one, but we can maybe mark it and then give them a little commentary on, uh, you know, that we're, we're interested in this, but we think there might be some steps in between yeah. where we're at today and the feasibility stuff. Sure. I mean, is the next option uh, design? Or... Uh, the next option is uh, information about union districts or other information. Okay, so back to the other one. Yeah. Uh, Feasibility study. Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I'll let these things go. <laughs> and I don't think we're there yet, personally. And then if we were. I rely more on on uh, the provider to, to sort of do the info. I don't want to say for us. They're going to do it themselves. I think. But they're not going to jump into something that they're not going to make money on. So, I mean, we could do it, but it just seems like a waste of time. Anyway, that's my opinion. Yeah, the committee is a little bit divided on kind of. What the best approach is for uh, pursuing town town wide fiber, and you know, some of us are concerned about the commitment by private company to the last mile, um, you know, without having any kind of uh, municipal, you know, yeah, feet to the fire. Basically, of, this is the contract, and you can't just cut out this section of the town because it it would be profitable for you. <laughs> You know, to, to do that, like, we want all of our residents to have this. Is there any benefit for the? I don't know how exactly you want people to the fire, but feet to the fire. But uh, is there any benefit to the town taking a position like we? Uh, you know, if you're coming in, I understand you can do that, but uh, if you can't go to the last mile, we're not really happy to see you here. You know, how do you? How do you expect to get to that? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I was just like. Uh, organized crime or something. <laughs> 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 no, I, I mean that's kind of it. Is like if, if 
there, there is a certain degree of, you have a, a window that you have to work kind of quickly in because at a certain point, like if MC Fiber gets enough of a foothold in the town, then I think the town's position to say, no, we need to make sure that we get the last mile, it becomes hard to argue. It becomes hard to negotiate that because then you get into the problem of, you know, why is the town subsidizing, you know, these, these two dozen houses out of movies when, you know, we didn't get, we didn't get that consideration. You know, we had our, you know, um, MC Fiber was setting up for us. So, um, you know, I think it's kind of, again, like we got to get our survey responses back and really, because really it comes down to should we let MC Fiber do private, like, do the private enterprise thing and just go into, into Johnson and, and hope that they're going to give us last mile coverage? Or do we actually take the position that, you no, know, we as the town of Johnson, in some capacity, are going to become a, you know, gatekeepers for this community to make sure that all of the people are given fiber, you know, for broadband um, coverage, which might be, it might be through, you know, again, a co-op becoming um, a, a utility. Um, it could just be that Johnson contracts with MC Fiber and says, we are going to pay up front for all of this, but you have to make sure that every every house is, is you know, there are, there are a lot of options, but obviously, like, that, that's money, and the, the community might not have the stomach to pay for it. So, so how is your survey going to help you decide what position to take um, or to recommend? Well, we, the, some of the questions uh, involved, first of all, like, would you be interested in actually, you know, paying money, <laughs> you know, to, to get, um, uh, to get full broadband coverage in, in town? Um, there are other things like, for example, uh, you know, that the town, like, do, do you value community-owned utility? So, you know, the, the, like, private corporation versus town-owned was, was a question. There was also a question about, you know, there are things like, for example, net neutrality, um, which is based, for anybody who doesn't know, net neutrality is um, all internet traffic being, picked up, being metered at the same rate. So, you know, your internet service provider can't say, all right, well, we're going to let you go to Amazon at full speed, but we're going to cut that close in half. Um, that sort of thing. That neutrality makes that not possible. <laughs> um, and um, as a recent, uh, because of recent FCC regulation changes, um, that neutrality is effectively dead. And, and they can now on uh, meter, your ISPs can meter this. So there's a degree of like, do you want your ISP to be able to do that? <laughs> and most people say no. <laughs> I, want to be able, I don't want to have my, my um, internet meter. Privacy is another big thing. Again, you get into these things where you know you look at how some some corporations don't behave particularly well with, with um, data. Um, you know, whereas this idea that it was just a utility that was managed and you know owned by the community, the community can have a greater input into um, how how the utility behaves towards its investors. I don't know if that makes any sense, but. <laughs> It sounds to me like there. Once someone moves into the community, the I was reading the TV from what you're saying that that uh, it might foreclose other opportunities because people slices of the pie are being taken on. Well, that's exactly what has happened because of Comcast. Yeah. Comcast has moved into the area. And, you know, any place that has Comcast, all the other ISPs are. You know, especially if it's not something where it's just like a dish or something where they have to run a line of some sort of the house, they, they don't want to go there because they don't want to compete with Comcast. And there's also the argument that, you know, talk is cheap, people can say, oh, I want fiber, I want fiber, but, you know, fiber comes back and it's $20 more, $20 a month more than Comcast. Are people really going, like, do people hate Comcast enough to pay $20 more a month? Some people, you know, when it comes down to it, it's going to be Comcast. Mm -hmm. When do you think the survey will be um, scored or results? When is it, assuming they're meaningful results. <laughs> Soon. Soon? <laughs> but it just seems to me, you know, I don't mean to monopolize this, but no. it seems to me that it's probably important to make a decision before a trigger gets pulled on people starting to come in. And, and when it's that, and 
Is there a deadline we might speak? Uh, I don't know if there's a deadline. I don't know if the town can really control I'm sorry, the selling service who does it. We probably need to let them come in, but it's not like we're, I mean, I suppose we could give them a blessing of, hey, look who's coming to town. But, I mean, any ISP can start providing service anytime they want. There's no law against anyone doing that. So, I, mean, <coughs> I don't. So, we would probably have an interest in last mile and price. Well, we would, I mean, and not have a, this is the way I, so the town, if you live within a quarter mile of Route 15, Route 100, or Route 100 C, you probably have access to Domino's. Maybe not, but it's, uh, I would say with 95% of sure that you have access to them. There's about 400 people in town that don't live in that area. So, I mean, 400 residences. Yeah, 400 residences. Right. There may be some businesses where I don't know. If you have a home business. Um, and it's about 42 or 43 miles of road. So that may or may not equate the cable miles uh, to serve those people. The foreign people who don't have that access to high school. So this is where the community divides. I'm more interested in getting those people in service because they have no access to it at all. And then worrying about the people who already have high speed. Um, and I, I mean, mentally in my mind, that makes sense. But from a financial standpoint, it also makes sense because you can't, a company can't come in, or a small company, I should say, can't come in and start building on Main Street and turn a profit and survive and they would be out of business when they were in. So, I, I, I mean, if there were other options, it's not like we have 20 different ISPs to, to survey and say, hey, which one of you is going to do a great job for us? I mean, we have three, but I know what they said. Maybe may four if it, it came to the fiber of the um, or Two of them are Comcast and Consolidated. So it isn't like there's an overwhelming amount of choices to choose from. The other option is to set up a district with other towns or by yourself, but you still have to subcontract all the work out. You still have to, I mean, unless you're going to actually form a company that has employees and trucks and equipment and customer service people and line people and all this stuff, uh, you're going to subcontract to somebody to do. So, I mean, when I, when I think of setting up a, a municipally owned fiber, Option. It just seems unrealistic to be financial that it would ever, ever take up. But I could be totally wrong. I mean, a lot of, a lot of small towns are doing it. I think it's one of those things where it's going to happen eventually. It's just a question of whether or not it's going to be 10, 20 years behind the curve. Yeah, I'll take one of those. I suspect that if the MC Fiber group if we sign a non disclosure agreement, I think it might be good for the board to look at what they're proposing in the executive session. So we have some understanding of, of what of that. Uh, so I can, I'll send everybody on the board of NDA and I'll CC uh, MC5. So then when you sign the NDA, They'll send it to them, and they will send you their proposal. Well, I would ask here if you think we can handle it. Well, I, I just think that if there's something out there, we have to look at it. Mm -hmm. yeah, the board. Uh, the question I got is, okay, if it was cost effective to go out the last mile, Comcast would do it because they do it to make money. Yes. If MC Fiber won't compete with Comcast. Comcast currently is in the populated areas. It's where the most bang for the buck for every mile is. How are they going to make money if uh, they're in the outlying areas where you know one mile may have one or two residents right. versus 
So if Gullah Cash charges $37,000 in miles of run cable, now they have to drop to the house, and they like to have about 16 to 19 customers per month. MC Fiber charges about $22,000 a mile to run cable, drop the houses. And to so MC Fiber allows you to invest, right? So if I want to pay for a mile of fiber, they will pay that money back with interest to me as an investor. Or if you want to invest, anybody in this room wants to invest. For them to uh, be able to cover their costs and pay back the investor, they need six people per month. Six houses. Six houses. Well, six customers. Money in houses, but six customers. Um, and they need five, four or five to cover their costs. So the other one or two are paying that investment back if that's the way that it is done. So they base all of their numbers. So the people that operate MC Fiber used to be a part of EC Fiber, which is a fiber district that covers a lot of towns in southern part of the state. Uh, so they're basing all of their Data, their numbers off of EC fiber. So that's that's where they get their information from. It should be fairly realistic. Uh, so because they can operate cheaper than a large corporation, uh, charge less per mile, they only need as many customers per mile, that's how they can do the outliers and still you know, make money. That's also the reason why they can't do the downtowns because. They'd have to make a lot more to cover that cost. It's, to get a pole license on French Hill Road, for example, it's fifteen hundred dollars. To get a pole license on Route Fifteen, it's four thousand dollars. So, just the actual building cost down Main Street is much more expensive. Uh, so, I'm not in the business. I'm just telling you what they told me. Uh, but that's how they can do it cheaper. I don't know what consolidated charges per mile. So consolidated will build out an entire town with fiber if the town wants the contract to do that. Uh, the town has to cover the entire cost and it could be done. Uh, Comcast would do the same thing if you want to cover the cost. And MC Fiber would do the same thing if you want to cover the cost. But it's you know, 37,000 miles, 22,000 miles, somewhere in between. It's how much do you want to pay, I suppose. Uh, but if you if you sign the NDA and read the proposal, they offer a bunch of options. I mean, in terms of funding it, uh, investments, funding, the town owns the network, they own the network, the town owns the network, you contract with them to build it, service it. I mean, they, they have a wide variety of options. I mean, they, they would be willing to work with us we haven't been able to tell them what we want because we, we don't necessarily have a big consensus on that ourselves. Yeah, Paul, are you the only person on the committee who has, uh, has looked at that and has signed the agreement? As far as I know, I, I don't I don't know if anybody else has or not. Okay. Everyone's afraid of the NDA. I am, no, I think that's decided. <laughs> I'm sorry I put you in. <laughs> I mean, I can't give you exact numbers, but at the lowest amount of money, I mean, you're looking at somewhere between a million and a million and a half to, to service the 400 people that don't have the service at the moment. That would include the Comcast that So it's, you know, it's a, it's a large chunk of money. The, the, the biggest issue is you need you need to find the money, right? That's what I told uh, LCPC. How can they help us the most? Find a source of the funding because that's that's what's going to hold everything up. I mean, the town's not going to pay to have that happen. Uh, you know, private investment will cover some of it, I would think, but you're limited as to what this money is going to cover. Didn't the state just make an announcement that said that it's only for? LCPC to do stuff like this for you. It's just a little bit of money. It's not for filter. Oh. 
And has there been any talk or uh, research into this type of investment, what the payoff is in terms of growth and opportunities for the town years down the road? Yeah. That's something else. Yeah. That's a lot of time work. <laughs> I think that's important part yeah. of the equation. I think uh, the state just removed their contract or their uh, license with Comcast and they're requiring them to go another 150 miles or some number in the coverage for the state. I'm not sure how that would affect Johnson, but yeah. probably not that much. One other kind of important thing to consider when we talk about the privatization model is that there would not be really any, the town would be able to do, there would be an effective, the town would be, sorry, we would be delivering a customer base that we would then have no pricing for no guarantees of it. You know, we could you deliver a bunch of people to Comcast and Comcast could raise the rates ten dollars a month for a year. And well, you know, thanks down. <laughs> you know, this is my this is my only other option. So you know, the municipal option there is also the ability to say, oh like, this is how much we're gonna charge for you know for going forward and then there's a, a ability for redress. If people feel it's, it's being unfairly What's more, thought? You feel comfortable signing a non disclosure? <coughs> it's not something we typically do. Usually, you're really open. Well, I just want to be sure that it's kosher with. Uh, Open meeting stuff, I guess it would be fall category, premature exposure with, with the town or competitive disadvantage. If we sign something like that, I'll just directly say, Doug, does that preclude us from looking at other people's proposals? You know, for them? I, I wouldn't say so, but I think you want to use your non exposure. <laughs> it doesn't allow you to share whoever you sign the non disclosure with. You can't share the information they gave you with their competitors. They're trying to protect their their numbers, basically. They don't want you to call up Comcast and say, hey, I just got this piece of paper from Chris Holliday, and they can do this for a million dollars. Can you do it? <laughs> that's what they don't want you to do. That's what they're trying to do. You're also prohibited from uh, taking it to the press. Yes. I guess my other thought is that the people on this committee know way more about these issues than I do. And that's really kind of the value of this committee for me is so you guys can educate us. <laughs> I'm not sure we're reading the, this business proposal is going to be as effective as the committee giving us some, uh, some information. I would suggest that the uh, I would sign a non disclosure agreement and I would want to have a meeting with the committee where the committee and the, rest of the board discuss that because I think you might want to hear what we think might want to be done and we want to know what you think. You know? I, I think this needs to be driven forward. I have no idea what the answer is, but I think we need to. You and we need to do some digging, and it starts me leaving you off the just as an investigative committee without some policy direction, and not won't get us going. Yeah. Yeah. So, as far as you know, you're the only one that has signed the degree. I don't know if no travel was done. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, I'm the only one with travel was done. It says, put So where do we go from here? Maybe you should get the uh, survey results together so that we can pinpoint what the goal of the town is. And I think it's just, you know, do we hitch our wagon to um, one of those internet service providers that's going to stick around, or do we take uh, take matters into our own hands? That where the board's part? See that that's rude. 
should be information on your surveys, what you what you want to bring to a meeting or have a have a proposal. And uh, you know, having a proposal will and your survey will help us say, Oh yeah, no no, what's what's next? I think right now we're in uh, never never on uh, not not uh, being able to move forward. Any thoughts on that survey? Be prepared and come back to us. So you'll get back to us when you're going to be on the agenda. Okay. Well, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Uh, might as well get into your report, Brian, the Royal Valley. All right. Uh, first up, we had uh, the Royal Valley Veterinary Service uh, took in a dog for us uh, back in September. Uh, when LVVS took in the dog for us. Uh, the dog was in extremely poor condition and we weren't sure how long it would survive and it was suffering at the time. It had no tags and so we checked for a chip. We put out postings trying to find an owner. Being unable to find an owner and the dog being in extremely poor health, uh, the dog was ordered euthanized uh, because we just didn't really have a choice in the matter, especially with the dog suffering at the time. Uh, the vet on service disagreed and uh, was able to save the dog and rehabilitate it. It's been given to uh, Justice for Dogs now. LVBS has asked uh, that we, if we would donate the amount of money that we would have spent for euthanasia to the offset the cost that they incurred by rehabilitating the dog. And that's $106? Yes. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion, second. Any discussion? And the only bit of a little concern we might have here is because we had issued an order to be carried out by the veterinarian. They, on their own, decided not to carry forward the Not exactly a way they should be uh, operating. Unless they have a duty that they come to their license and they should post. I have to recuse myself from this. Okay. You note know that? Doug's recusing? Yeah. It's just a concern I bring to light. I mean, uh, obviously they saved the dog's life, and it's now yeah. gone to a better home, hopefully. Um, we would have been out the hundred six bucks. Yeah. yeah. Any other discussion? Seeing that, all those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Merger study. Okay, we have the contract with the uh, merger study uh, with CGR. When you received this the other day, uh, the contract had, I believe, one place for a signature in the town. And then the president of CGR, I sent out the email to the board and copied Gordy, the village trustee chairman, with a suggestion uh, that, that it be approved, uh, contingent upon legal review, and unless we heard back from Gordy with any concerns from the village. I did not hear anything back from Gordy, so I'm taking that to me. You guys would, it looked pretty boilerplate. Um, but I did 
put a recommendation out that it probably should go through our attorney as that's normal practice. What's the board's point? An attorney costs how much an hour? One seventy five. One seventy five. One seventy five. This says it's gonna they're gonna start November first. Uh, the contract would begin November 1st. They would actually begin uh, probably the second week of January. Okay, after Meredith. After Meredith is back, and uh, between our schedule and their schedule, it looks like January is the best time to start. Uh, you know, Meredith will get back, but then we'll, we'll also have holidays around the same time, so I don't know exactly what her schedule is going to be like during that period. They've got some other contracts that they're going to be finishing up at the end of the year. So it seems like putting this on the calendar for the start of the new year is kind of the best for everybody involved. Um, one thing I would note on this, I guess two things I would note on this is one, I know Scott, you're not here to represent the village, but uh, this is a contract between the town and CGR. Uh, if we wanted this, if the village is okay with that, then it probably is convenient for them to have a single point of contact, but this is not a contract between the town, the village, and CGR. It should be. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one on here was uh, Section 12. Uh, it says, especially the, really all of Section 12, it's, uh, that this agreement shall be governed by and under the laws of the state of New York. Um, everything, any disputes will be resolved by a court within the jurisdiction of the state of New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, in particular, that if a dispute arises between the two parties, the venue for the resolution will be in the county of Monroe, New York. Uh, so we're taking this entirely out of Vermont. New York. Yep. Well, it's just in terms of turf, it's harder and much more expensive. Um, I would get, ask our lawyer to look at section 10, uh, determination on 30 days notice, and then what, or what grounds for it, and things like that. And what are you left with? Money is owed. But how long does it take to check a contract? It takes a lot of mental energy to parse through this. <laughs> I'm looking for time. Oh, time? A couple of hours? Yeah. Three hundred fifty bucks. And and then you're then you're in a position of writing alternatives, you know, suggestions. I guess first of all, the board agrees should have under section seven two uh, signatures, one for the village, one for the town. Mm -hmm. And secondly, uh, Duncan's suggest Duncan's, uh, Doug's suggestion section ten termination of the agreement, as well as section twelve. What was your suggestion to scrapping it? Uh, I, I think we should go back and say that it's going to take place in Vermont. In and, Vermont. In Memorial okay. County. Yeah. I mean, if we negotiate somewhere in between, that's fine, but Ooh. this is... Jurisdiction and venue in Vermont. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely think Vermont. This is everything about the work produced and the execution of this takes place in Vermont, so I don't see any reason we should... Why it should the resolution of any dispute should also take place in Vermont? Was there anything else that gave concern? Not having the ability to read through it closely, it just got me. So no, I don't have anything to add. But just I'm changing the dates on section two. Did you say that? Changing the date. This was sent to the start on January. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that oh. makes sense too. We should start it. She can start it. So you want that explicitly spelled out? I think. Yeah. Well, did you get that? From? Yeah. Scott. Scott. Yeah, I got more questions on this. I haven't seen the document yet. <clears throat> so it's sort of like how that can work. The contract, are there two contracts? One for the village specific, then one for the town specific? Uh, I don't first, believe so. I don't, I'm not aware of the, the village contract. With that contract, does it have the base of work for the work? I'm just trying to verify what, why the village sort of disappeared from the contract. I think we're recommending that reappear. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm just curious. Uh, it does. The payment has the total 10000 so yeah. they did not, for whatever reason, split up. Okay, so the document that you're looking at will cover both the village and the town. Mm -hmm. Right. Got it. So a comment that I have to say that we're the money um, and time for everybody, including the trustees, is it's valuable information what you're talking about for corrections on the document, but before you send those corrections to a, a lawyer to review, it might be beneficial to have the village trustees come at it as well. Just do it once instead of twenty. Well, we, gave each we gave the opportunity to go at these and, and knowing we were gonna meet tonight and, and I never heard back from them, so I haven't seen that. Well, maybe we, we, haven't maybe. Talked, we haven't talked about this as a group in the village okay. trustees, and I think it would be really good. I guess I would appreciate if Gordy would have just notified me that they haven't had the opportunity to look at it yet, and he would, would like that. But, okay, so no. Scott, perhaps because it said that down at Johnson, it didn't get forwarded to you, maybe? I haven't. Well, I forwarded it to Gordy, but he may have not forwarded it to Gordy. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm just I'm just asking that you would give the same grace that you know for years for yep. us. Well, then we can discuss this as the trustees come up with both town, you know, both village recommendations for potential tweaking of the contract. We do it just once instead of having two parties try to finalize something and not necessarily agree on it. Just to make it easy. I think it probably makes sense because the village may be Identify something else that they have car burned with. Oh, you could well, well, we concur with what you folks are saying. It would be awesome. And yeah. then you know, we could just have to do a review. So, when Meredith gets back, get who's it. running your meetings with Meredith's absence? Gordy and company. Okay, so if you want to share with Gordy some of the thoughts that we have, I'll make a plan. Scott, are you saying you're going to run it through your attorney too? Or yes, yeah, I, don't, I don't want to speak up on behalf of everybody. But Probably go through the same thing, you know, for cost savings. You know, I'm not sure what you folks use for where. I'm not really clear sometimes how you use for where, but maybe just learn that once as a group to save a little bit of cash and time might be better. But, and again, I don't want to speak for myself when I was. Then splitting the cost of the attorney, sure. Yeah. That sounds like a good move. And then everybody's at the table because mm -hmm. this thing should be you know, wide open, fair. You know, to the point, there's, there's no weirdness to it. I think that's what everybody was hoping for. We might as well do this all out in the open and have us have this group with one reviewer. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. How long has the board had it? When did we get this? A week ago? Yeah, about, about one week. Not even. I think it was Friday, actually, when we got it. And we do meet. It was Thursday or Friday. Oh, the end of last week? We're not trying to go over the trustee's head. Oh, right. Yeah, about a week. It's not going to delay the start of the project. No. No. No, because it's not going to start in January. No, and, and so CGR far. is that they are expecting us to have some comments and send it back. This is, like I said, this is a boilerplate con contract for them, mm -hmm. and they kind of was they expect a little bit of modesty. Section 12, they identified. Yeah, I, I got a little heads up that we might not like section 12. It just, uh, I'm just trying to not have happen what happened to the RFP. I know between the village and the town, it seemed like it forever mm -hmm. because we all had different opinions. We didn't use that group. 
No, makes sense. We'll look forward it to glory. We'll come back in next week, right? Yes. Good. Okay. And those, what, three, four items that you yep. identified? I've got notes on those. Uh, I'll make up a copy to send to Gordy, who's got our comments added. Uh, and if Gordy and I can make time to meet, I'll meet with them and run through it. And I, I guess I was nominated as, as vice chair, so the same thing as well. Okay. Activities as vice chair. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Racial justice? All right. So, uh, everybody's had a little bit more time with uh, to think about this, so I wanted to bring it up again. And uh, I guess kind of the first thing I want to bring up is uh, through Eric, through Rich Westman, we received a referral to the uh, State of Vermont Human Rights Commission, and their director, Bohr, Bohr's uh, last name, Bohr Yang. Or yet, and as a public entity, they can conduct a training for us uh, with a recommended donation of two hundred dollars. Uh, they had a uh, speaking to Boris. She had a really good idea about trainings that would be fitting for us. We talked about kind of things that have happened over the last couple of years here in Johnson, some of the good good conversations we've had, some of the difficult conversations we had, and uh, we came up with a pretty good uh, idea for a program involving implicit and explicit bias and demonstrations, um, and setting that up as a, a public forum, allowing for time to come together uh, as a Kind of listening session and then another opportunity maybe on the same day if we wanted to make it longer or maybe on a, another day to come back again to have uh, kind of a listening session and then a more engagement session uh, and i the program that i work i was able to discuss with before that was pretty pretty good um the other options we have uh, to remind everybody was uh, uh, Peace and Justice. Am I saying that right? Uh, Peace and Justice Center. Um, and they have a, a number of trainings, uh, starting with uh, an, a training on implicit bias uh, that comes pretty well recommended. Um, by people who've attended the, the meeting. We have the Center for Fairness and Diversity uh, has a, a number of trains that they would provide. Uh, their training would focus around uh, the value of diversity. Uh, that was, uh, Curtis Breed was the director there. I really liked the, his description of the program that he would offer. Uh, that would be, kind of centered around what do we gain in a variety of contexts, but what, what do we gain by diversity and eliminating bias? Uh, and it was, his message was a lot about how to, how to bring people to the table for the discussion and how, how we value this and why we value it. Um, and then we had, uh, that was recommended by the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Uh, the third option was uh, Keisha Rao and her partner. They are recommended by Greg Stefanski. They had a pretty wide variety of options that we could do. And the, they were, uh, they would make a much more customized program for us, but it was, their price is the highest of the ones we had. So I didn't. Be honest i didn't think that they were likely to be the one that we would settle on so i didn't want to take a lot of their time to draw up a detailed program when they're you know a thousand dollars more than the, the next competitor i didn't think it would be a very fair use of their time because i 
didn't think it was likely that we'd select. And uh, Afi Wortham, a local resident uh, who has a great deal of experience with civil rights and uh, diversity uh, it's Afi's organization. So. Transcultural. Transcultural Institute. Um, and Afi's offering to do the uh, a program for us on the order of uh, two or three hundred dollars or, or less. Afi's very interested in participating and helping with helping us with what we want to do. Uh, it's a late addition to this, but I I like the conversation I was able to have with Laura Yang earlier uh, late last week. Uh, and even if we elect something else, I think that's a really good starting point. It's something that we can afford, and it's uh, it's pretty comprehensive. Do you have a any? I don't have a write up from uh, from Bohr. for 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 individually or that's uh, State Department. It's no, I understand. What what was the question about Bohr about the workshop that she would she both? Would, I guess she would, no, she. Uh, but no, we. I don't have a, a write up from her. Okay. She she has a pretty extensive bio on the human rights mission webpage. Uh, B O R uh, Y A N G. She's the executive director. Kim? Did anybody throw out um, there's a program that was being done by the Vermont Humanities, and a lot of times they do their programs um, well, sometimes for free. Um, so I didn't know. I, I could have brought the information, but I didn't know that that wasn't in the mix as far as what, what's been looked at. Uh, not extensively. I mostly went off of recommendations. Um, that there's a lot of people offering a lot of programs, and it's hard to it, it's hard to evaluate them unless we know somebody who's been and heard them speak uh, for us to know what that's going to be like. Uh, so I really relied on on recommendations. So, Brian, at our last meeting, you said you were going to get more information on Afi and what he's done and testimonials because we just felt like we didn't have much to work from. Is that, were you able to do that? Yes, we got a little bit more from Afi. I wasn't able to get any testimonials, but we did talk about a program that we could put on that would be a good fit for Johnson. Yes. I don't know if that links to any of these things, is that what you're doing right now? <laughs> I, I, mean, um, yeah. I mean, aside from other, I mean, I know there's probably people in this room who have seen maybe some of these uh, programs. But if anyone knows of any links on YouTube or of these, of these programs, sometimes you don't have any. I don't have any video links. Uh, off, I can give you a link to one we're talking about right now is off his website. Okay. Um, and that that's really, I've got a little bit more of uh, kind of what we were talking about here is trying, in particular, trying to answer and discuss the questions of uh, kind of what's the state of Johnson, what's going on here, uh, what do we, uh, 
what about our uh, racial, ethnic, and diversity problems and, and questions in Johnson? And what can we do on our community and schools uh, to address polarization, tension, and diversity? That's from Offie? Yes. Uh, Offie had a, we were able to describe a pretty good program. Uh, and he would have a similar approach of getting together, hearing uh, speakers, and then breaking into discussions. Uh, which is really the, everybody's describing a pretty similar format for that. I have a question. Yes. So I'm, uh, I know this was discussed at early meetings, but in thinking about this type of workshop or training, like what are the sort of explicit objectives? What are we hoping to accomplish? Because I don't think that helps choose the speaker. Well, I know that um, the, uh, the first workshop that we talked about uh, from the Peace and Justice Center, and I worked with Brian and Kyle, um, and you know, the Peace and Justice Center has been part of the state for decades, right? <laughs> so respected. And um, the, that workshop was called Seeing uh, and Disrupting Racism. So the first part was about what is racism? How do I see it? How do I know what do I see it? You know, is it this? Is it that? You know? And then the rest was about interrupting it and um, that expectation. It was a great workshop. It was put on by uh, three different people. Al Coulson was one of them. He is, um, you know, the founder of Good News Garage. I see the work of Good News Garage every day when I go to work. And uh, he's been on Oprah. That he's uh, a representative in the state house. Um, he's a Democrat. And it was put on by him and another woman, a brown woman who was Native American. I forget her name. And uh, white woman, and they really are very thoughtful in how they do it. They send out three people, they would never send out one person, because they understand the type of, uh, what this brings up to people, how difficult it is, especially for us white people to talk about racism. They're really prepared for that, and for what uh, it brings up for people, how people are triggered, and they're prepared to sort of keep a lid on it, and educate, and keep it flowing. So they would never send out one person that would be against their best practices. And um, they have an extensive website with extensive uh, descriptions of their workshops, and um, there's a lot, lot to be seen from that. But that was the original intention of us to uh, identify what racism is, and then strategies to interrupt it. Who is our audience? We're for which are we running it from the board? Are we running it from the community? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. I would imagine the community, yeah. I think that's the original intention is kind of open to all and hopefully board members go and hopefully many people in the community go. Thank you. And then a call. The board especially as leaders, any leaders in the town, and any townspeople. Yes. Um <clears throat> I feel it would be better to have a board neutral. As do you want to list them some of the objections you had to the town at this point? Okay. How much was Peace and Justice? Did you have place to talk about it? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Peace and Justice was uh, 1,500. What was this, the whole slate of 1,500 for Peace and Justice, uh, 2,000 for Fairness and Diversity. Two to three hundred. Offie would do whatever we're comfortable doing uh, for uh, Offie. The board would do it for a donation of two hundred dollars, and uh, Keisha Ram and her partner would be uh, uh, two to three thousand. I don't believe that Stowe or Morris were able to obtain grants uh, for this kind of program. I 
could be wrong about that, but I don't believe that they were able to obtain grants for similar programming uh, recently. Did anybody check in with LCDC on whether that's? I did not ask for grant funds. For it wasn't town sponsored, though. No. In those other two communities. So they wouldn't have been really eligible for that grant, probably. If it was not town sponsored. And this is not? This would be. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. You think some justice being sort of extra at the lower end uh, works with them and asking people to go through the entire thing and there's good recommendations and mm -hmm. sort of um, there's a good discussion on that or? Mm -hmm. we've been discussing it but we haven't decided on who or well but some right. of the numbers are a little pricer uh, Sticker shop for us. I didn't realize it cost this kind of money. I did try to make a motion to do this the last meeting and it, it died for a lack of a second. For peace and justice. I just want to back a few comments that came out of the room. Um, that's for multiple uh, presenters. It, it's an emotional topic, and I think you run the risk of having only one person do the conversation. There may be people in the room who just don't see eye to eye and they're going to lock up and not pay attention. I've been through a lot of these trainings and we have multiple presenters. There's usually somebody that you can connect with for that message. So, you know, when you go through this, I would encourage you a lot to do the multiple presenters, a minimum two, when you go through it. If you really want this kind of the same thing, without people pay attention, I think it's the way to go. Agreed. And when it came to that one, the amount of you said you could have? It would depend on, we would have to give them an estimate of how many people were going to attend. Okay. And they would decide. And that would not substantially affect the cost. Yeah. Uh, and that's generally true. That uh, you know, I think Offie was the only one who was experienced really expecting, because he's doing it himself, uh, <laughs> that there wouldn't be multiple presenters, uh, that they would tailor it to our audience and we'd say, you know, we'd run some kind of, you know, RSVP or something like that and tell them how many people they'd find to attend and they'd decide how many people they could send. CG, or not, talking about <laughs> uh, <laughs> other contracts. Um, the Peace and Justice Center has done this training quite a few times so they've got much more descriptive uh, on their website so we're really pretty clear on what they can offer us a lot of the others and the more expensive ones would design a program for us that we'd have a little bit of a back and forth conversation about who was going to attend more details about what those goals and, and outcomes that we wanted to see and they would decide at that point how many people do we need? Who's going to come out? Which of their team is best suited for us? Um, we just didn't get... We didn't spend a lot of time with them because there didn't seem to be a very big appetite for, you know, two or $3,000. Uh, and I, I didn't think it was... I spent some time talking with them, got a little bit more details, but I... Just didn't feel good about using too much of their time designing a program that it didn't seem like there was any appetite for us to mm -hmm. purchase. Could we? I'm wondering. I'd, I'd like to see a room full of people. Can we? Uh, can we find out if that's any sort of possibility? Could we do something on front porch for them and say if if the town sponsors a meeting on this subject, you know, w would you be interested in attending, and when would you like it to be, or what sort of thing? Can you know? Uh, it, it's, I'd like not to have five people there. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty Sorry, clear. This is clear. <laughs> this well, is it's, clear. It's cle well, it's clear that, that, that the connections are here, you know? I, I don't know if it's clear beyond how large of a body you're talking about. You know, I'd like to see 40, 50, you know, have to move it. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it, 
I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just trying to say, you know, let's 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 get some publicity out there beyond, you know, I suspect word of mouth or, or small network, and uh, and uh, let's let's find out if we can't draw in a much bigger crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, Makes sense. Well, it sounds like so far like only a couple of the options are depending on how many people show up, and it sounds like the Peace and Justice Center has a pretty uh, like full package, complete. Like they just show up with the multiple presenters, and it's a low cost. I just it kind of seems like a no-brainer from where I'm sitting. That seems like a really good option, and you don't have to poll people. They just come present as they are. And people who want to show up and participate come out of the numbers are right there and they're ready for them. One that I attended at, uh, at the Jeffersonville Library, there had to be 40 or 50 people crammed in there. There wasn't enough seats. And this was put on by a couple of churches and the library. Um, I stumbled upon it and I was like, oh, let me go to this thing. Um, but I don't remember a big, you know, call out, casting a wide net, who's going to come, blah, blah, blah. So they had, I mean, if that's an indication. Well, well here's, here's, the, here's the basis for one thing. A number of people here on our board have said if the Peace and Justice Center runs it, we, are, we don't want to attend. Because there's philosophy, you know, th there's a certain politics behind that, and then there's a program. And I'm thinking that if there is enough of uh, an interest in something like that, I would actually favor the Peace and Justice Center for uh, them to do it because I think they'll probably do just a terrific job. I can separate that from other politics that I might or might not agree with. And uh, I think that if we had an expression in our community of that, you know, if this group came, we would be very interested in it. It might help us with the question of whether or not we're running it for the board or we're running it for the community. I, I, I really love for the for the board to attend this community leaders, especially in light of um, you know we have had a couple of incidents uh, that the board's been presented with. They haven't all gone very well. You know, um, one went very badly, and so I, I think uh, it's very important that the board be dug in to um, learn it like the rest of us. Absolutely. Just for the folks who. Who have uh, witnessed these uh, workshops? And when you mentioned a political piece, was there a political piece to the workshops? No, absolutely not. So I, think not. I think you can separate it out, and that's great. I think you should encourage other board members to be able to do that. Um, Peace and Justice Center, I believe, is the most credible. We have the most information on them. They've been around the longest, as far as I know. Um, they're doing this thing everywhere. So my concern is that people are that some people may be more concerned with being uncomfortable, which I fully expect to be at this thing. <laughs> That's what these things are about. Um, so that we just try to get past that and, and really look at the, the root of the issue here, which is recognizing racism, stopping it, addressing these behaviors. It's not about people, it's about behaviors. So it's, it's important that folks keep a very right, to see past what they believe may be a political um, agenda. It's, it's about racial bias, addressing it, recognizing it, disrupting it. Yep. I, I agree with what you're saying, and I also feel like um, what Doug said about getting the message out is really important as well. And I think Front Porch Forum, the Jeffersonville one, I think I saw it in the paper, in News and Citizen, listed as like something that was happening on this date at the library. And I didn't get to get there, but I pinpointed it and said, that sounds like something that I'd like to attend. So getting it publicized enough that people around are, are saying, wow, this is happening in the other Yeah, Jeffersonville's done one, Morseville's about to do one, I think we can. Morseville did one in the third, didn't they? Third hospital. I think Eric said those were town sponsored. Though. Is that correct? They were sponsored by. They were not sponsored. So, uh, yeah. I feel like um, a comment that was just made is kind of shaming some of the select board members into going with this peace and justice program because they don't believe in their politics. I, for one, won't even watch a movie 
with Jane Fonda in it because of her politics in Vietnam. So, you know, you have your right to your opinion, they have the right to their opinions. You shouldn't be pushing and saying you should go because, you know, this is a great program. It might be the best program in the world, but if the wrong people are giving it, then it's not the best program in the world. I was just suggesting that it's the most credible it's been around a long time and it seems to be on, on point of what fits with our, if you want to call it, baby inclusivity statement um, and they're rejecting racism. And that to me was the impetus of all this stuff. With some racial, as I correct me if I'm wrong, there were some events that happened. Out of that came a statement that called the inclusivity statement through, through, the, uh, through the mail, I guess. Um, but personally, my interest was the reject part of that statement. Um, those behaviors, again, not those people. But if you're a person who inhabits those behaviors, then That's you gotta right. open that up, you know? But, so, uh, to me, it wasn't meant to shame, but I think it's important that we, that we look at what we really want to accomplish here. Yes. Well, I think, um, Part of the potential problem here is that you know we set up a workshop and they basically would be speaking to the choir. You know, are, uh, how, are we, how are we going to get people to come to this that maybe really need you know, a workshop? Like that? The, the people that really need to come to it are not going to come to it. Right. That's the thing. Exactly. That's, you know, I feel like that inclusivity statement, as wonderful as it is, a lot of people in town feel like that was pushed down their throats. That we, they feel that it wasn't necessary in this town. I found the older I got, the older I got, I'm finding out just how much more I still need to know and how there's less time for me to learn it. And I really think that these conversations, like who needs to go to this? I, I need to go to this. I need in my life to become more knowledgeable, uh, more accepting, and a better person, and a better member of this community. So I'm not sure, like, I think we all need to go. Um, for, we don't, I mean, everybody certainly is invited to go. Uh, I think for our own uh, reasons that it's, it really would be a wonderful thing if we could, you know, take steps in and other people who are sort of hesitant out of, uh, for whatever reason, that we can just continue extending that invitation as a, so that we can all as a community become more knowledgeable, accepting, and better. Um, I agree, we all can, that's for sure. I face it every day in my home, so. Uh, it's there. Really, I don't think there's, you can have a thousand of these meetings and it's not going to change the way people feel. People are what they are. And just the, the inclusivity statement, but I'll tell you what it was me personally. It got pushed down, I felt like it was being pushed down our throats, and yet the same people that were pushing it were against the Dollar General. We're against Weissland. We're against these businesses coming into town because you're not our kind of people. We don't want you. So how can you say everybody's included but you're pushing these people away? And, and then to attack business members in this town because their politics are different from yours. And yet you're, you have a committee in town that's supposed to be helping business in Johnson and you're you're doing the opposite of that when you're attacking these business people. They're a business. They pay taxes in this town. Believe me, I see it. I'm a tax person. We need those taxes in this town. And you just, you can't keep pushing people away and say, we don't want you. You're not inclusive. You're not included in our statement. You can't pick and choose. Uh, I just want to make sure we're, we're on topic. Yeah, um, uh, the racial justice workshop. Because we've litigated the, the and we need to continue to have a discussion. I don't want to certain that the discussion that's important to have, but this is about which workshop we're gonna have. One thing, Cal. 
know what's next now. Yeah. I just would speak to that, that it gives us strategies. If everyone doesn't attend in the community, the people that do attend will get strategies to be able to work with those people, to work with the community as a whole. So, I mean, it's still about. And I'd be willing to call LCBC tomorrow and find out if they could help us with, you know, finding a grant or having any monies to go toward funding the, you know, pay. I, I can. Follow up, on follow up on that. Have you ever heard of any funding for this kind of thing? Uh, I haven't, but I haven't. But you haven't looked for it either. Yeah. Okay. And you probably better look into yours, Eric, with your suggestion. Than Brian through. I just provided the names of Brian. He's okay. the one that's so probably up. better look into that one more to see what they actually provide if they bring a team. And uh, they they have a, a staff and, and a team available. <laughs> okay. It's are they have a website or something that uh, yeah the state of Vermont uh, Human Rights Commission they're a state and the Human Rights Commission yeah. Uh, so yeah it seems like we just keep kicking this can down the road um, I like it. I'm sorry is your name Sean Sean I liked what you said about speaking to the choir you know, and um, bringing Brian you mentioned something from Curtis Reed of Center for Fairness University, bringing people to the table that, um, yeah, not everybody's going to come and um, not everybody's going to come to the table, but if we can at least get everybody from our board um, to the workshop um, and invite people from the community, that's going to be, I think, a win, uh, which is why uh, we didn't go with Peace and Justice Center that night, because members of our board uh, said that they wouldn't go. Um, I think that we should make a decision tonight to go with either the human rights, uh, state of Black human rights um, commission, peace and justice center, or center for fairness and diversity. If one of those three, we should just go ahead and start setting up the workshop. If I can make a recommendation, uh, the human rights commission for Vermont is very affordable. They are a neutral party, they're a state organization, and uh, their director is very well qualified. Uh, she'll be able to give us the presenters that we need. Uh, I don't have any reason to doubt their ability to do this. And that, I, I don't think the conversation begins and ends with one meeting. I, I think that this is a, that they're a very good starting point and that we might take up something more challenging or at another another time. Uh, continuing with the workshop discussion. It's just really quick. I just left my hand up here for a while. Yeah, yeah. Um, point of privilege now. Yes. <laughs> I need training. Yeah. So, Brian, I just wanted to for the, the state organization. It seems like a lot of people in the audience have mentioned multiple presenters or a more professional way to go about this. For yeah. Would they have more than just one presenter? Uh, that would be available to us. Again, we would have to give them a number. Of how, how many people are we expecting to attend? And they. <laughs> Well, it's going to be, yeah. That, that's it's not a commitment that they have made to us, uh, that they would automatically give us multiple presenters. Jack? Yeah, um, yeah, I echo that really is important that the whole board um, dig into this. And I wanted, um, Anne had mentioned um, that she felt it wasn't necessary in this town. And I just want to um, say, I'm working on a letter, I, I won't take a whole lot of time with this, but there's been another incident in our town, a public incident, where um, some people were um, harassed, threatened with physical harm, um, they'll curse that, uh, speak ethnic English or American now, blah, 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 blah. Um, the Moore County Sheriff's Department was involved in this incident at, at this time. I was peripherally involved, and I'll be writing a letter and, and asking this board to take some actions about that. So just to say, you know, so that's the third incident now, this public incident, broad daylight, middle of Johnson Village, that's, that's going to be brought to you guys. So, and they're, they're, these things do go on. I know they go on. They go on. I see it every day at home. I am married to a black man. You don't have to tell me anything. Yeah. Well, 
I'm just I'm responding to you saying that it wasn't necessary in this town. I don't. Oh, so so that's that's where I'm coming from. Well, you can fill up with it. I don't have. To. Okay, I think it's not track the word shop. Yes. So this um, <clears throat> state entity, um, do you know where they run workshops in Florida? Uh, I mean, what sort of? I don't know the context that they've run the workshops before. I know we wouldn't be the first. We're, we're not a testing ground for them or anything, but uh, I don't know. Uh, the the human, Senator West. The Human Rights was, Commission, they've been in existence for, I, I don't know how many decades. Have, have you seen a workshop or has Rich Weston seen a workshop that they've done? Rich, Rich Weston, I believe, has attended. He's attended. Uh, he highly recommended for, um, you know, he, he has a lot of respect for. Uh, she has staff members that work with her on this, you know, doing these kind of workshops. I think it's very cool. We talked about it was a start. I make a motion that we go with the Human Rights Commission. We have motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second. Got a second. Any more discussion? Would there be total buy-in from the board? What do you say? Would everybody from this board go? Yes, I'd go. Go. Mm -hmm. Yep. No. Okay. I wasn't nodding. Okay. You're yawning or no? I wasn't nodding off. <laughs> you said you were nodding. Any other discussion? It would have to be at a time I could attend, but uh, well, yeah. likewise yeah. for everyone. Reference to the motion. Okay. Um, why? Why that over something that we know about? I, I guess I, the elephant in the room. What is the actual apprehension for peace and justice? I guess their stand on. Uh, the redistribution of wealth, and they are against ICE, and they'd like to disband ICE. And uh, I don't agree with either one of those, uh, especially ICE. If we didn't have ICE, we may have anarchy. Uh, so I felt very strongly about that. And so I felt as if, you know, and, and people, I, I can't remember who said it, but to try to step back from that and focus on something else, but it is still part of the organization. Okay, so if you're uh, contributing money to an organization, you are also furthering their beliefs and what they're trying to accomplish. And so that's why I felt uncomfortable with that. Human rights. Through the state, through the state of Vermont. Well, what I was taught, when uh, what Brian was talking about, and Richard Westman, Senator Westman, uh, if it came with high regard from him, uh, that carried a considerable amount of weight. Kim, something. Uh, yeah, no, it's since it is a town wide thing, is it uh, possible to put it as a requirement for all employees that they attend? It probably to would be outside normal work hours, so we probably could not do that. Uh, Eric, uh, oh, it, it finish up with Cal. I, I just want to finish up with you. The, the, the full thing, too, is that, you know, we we try to look after the money of the town, okay? So if you're talking about something $1,500 versus $200, you know, that is consideration, too, looking after the purse strings of our town. You know, I was elected to, to do that for roads and records and to try to get the most bang for the buck. So that also weighs on how much it costs. But Brian went on to say that it comes with good reports. He said that he, we would get our, get good value out of it. So I also have to defer to Brian in his comments. And is this more about the motion? No, I just wanted to comment on what Kim said. Um, I plan on going anyway, but 
I worked here 20 years. Ann's been here 30. Most of been here forever. Susie's been here eight. We never had a complaint from anybody that we were ever anything but polite or courteous to people. Okay. I don't think I had anyone in mind. I was just thinking as a town, if this is what we're trying to promote and we're trying to get everybody on board, that it seems like it would be great to get every, you know, as many people um, to encourage them to come. Is there any more discussion on the motion from the board? Seeing none. All those in favor, saying five by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Aye. Aye's carried. Legion Field. So we have a request for a bonfire to uh, celebrate the last community bake. Uh, it was received and approved for tonight, but it, the event got rained out for tonight. Uh, so will would the board approve uh, the bonfire on Legion Field for Monday the 14th. Did you guys all see the email on the way they constructed inside a ring? It's going to be in a fire. Yeah. 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 If okay. somebody had come to me with this request, I would have said, go do it. Don't ask the select board. <laughs> well, we have to do the fire ring. But it's going to be in a fire ring. There's no. Yeah. There, I, would, I don't think there's any requirement. I, we do have to give them permission. So I guess Motion. I would entertain a motion. Okay. Motion, so move for motion second. Nat and Doug. Yes. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, item five, is that the one we just took care of? Uh, Rosemary took care of that in the treasurer's report. Yep. I wasn't sure if we were doing that and where we were taking care of that. So that is all set. We struck item six. Uh, um, number six is the discussion for next Monday night. Is everybody available for a meeting next Monday night to discuss project prioritization? That's the Monday, 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 Monday night is the 14th. Yeah. Yes. It's the holiday. Indigenous Persons Day. Is that a holiday? It is. So you guys at work. Oh, uh, we, yeah. We were having somebody here. To explain it. We, we originally wanted to talk about the projects, but that in of itself is just going to be a topic for the night. Prioritization of all of our projects and with the stuff that got dumped on us, we couldn't dedicate a night to just that. So that's next Monday night. Sorry, is that the only reason you came? Sorry, but well, you're more than welcome to stay anyway. Uh, can, can we do six? Six o'clock? Oh, sorry, change. you just said that's a problem with changing things around. I, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to change things around. <coughs> um, we can do seven or whatever. I just, well, as either, long as we can do it next Monday night. Either one works for me. What's the rest of the board? Thought. Six or seven? I don't want to do six. Okay. Okay, we'll do seven o'clock. Next Monday? Yep. Thank you. Uh, animal control assignment? All right. We are temporarily working with uh, Hyde Park animal control officers to fill gaps in our coverage. Uh, and I want to also commend the Sheriff's Department for lending some additional assistance. Um, Tracy is back working for us again. She has finished her leave um, and, and wants to get back to work. We actually had an assignment today for uh, dog biting another dog. Um, no one is doing very well. I suppose it's a good time to mention. That uh, hopefully at your at the uh, well, we need to do it at the next October meeting. Uh, we will have to have Tracy resign as deputy health officer and be assigned as the lead health officer. 
Uh, the Board of Health only accepts changes once a month. Uh, so for the remainder of October, Eric is our lead health officer. Congratulations. Oh, I'm going to go buy a bunch of dogs. Yeah. <laughs> well, dogs fall under animal control, and we don't need the state's permission to assign animal control officers. We just need it. It's amazing how the state just didn't get Yeah. So are we putting a posting for the open position? We're going to put a posting out for the open position. I've solicited a couple other towns for... Uh, did, what did they do for constable and health officer and, and the like? Uh, hoping to get a little bit of information for what they have, but we'll we'll be putting out a posting for it. We should just note for the for the minutes in the record. It's a, a huge loss to lose uh, Sherry. She did a great job with the town. Yes. yes. Are you all set with that one? Yes. Uh, the next one, and I believe that's why you're here, Ian, right? Municipal office cleaning? Yep. I will recuse myself from this because of a relationship between our kids, and I will ask Doug to chair. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. The municipal office cleaning contract, as I believe it got set up, um, was placed out to bid. And you want to set up the? Uh, you know, we have a hand for letter. There, has everybody read the the letter from the hand? Yes. Um, do, well, I guess ask Brian. Is is that you know? Would you want to fill in any any parts to that, or, or do you want to address that? Um, that is, uh, I would say, general, general, generally accurate. Um, the kind of the, the history of this. Anne had been doing the work for us uh, for oh, over a year, wasn't it? A little over a year, uh, Anne was doing the work for us, did an outstanding job, uh, was able to address a number of things that hadn't been addressed when we had, uh, hadn't been able to be addressed in a long time. Like the, the floors in here are, uh, with the polishing, waxing, and resurfacing that Anne was able to do, and a few other areas were greatly improved. I have not been. No. Um, when we were, when Ann was filling in, it was temporary for us. Uh, we didn't have a formal relationship with Ann to do this. It wasn't part of her job description. It was just something that she was willing to do uh, for a little bit of extra hours. When the library custodian retired, that seemed like a really good opportunity to combine everything into one position which would allow more hours, and hopefully we might be able to attract uh, more interest than we were we'd been able to when it was just the town. Um, so we wrote up a job description and uh, request for applications. Um, I've included a copy of the request that we and the job posting that we made. Um, And I, I guess this is the part that I would characterize my recollection of it was that, and you weren't sure if you were interested or not, and didn't think that the number of hours estimated uh, was sufficient. Uh, the number of hours estimated uh, at this rate wouldn't be able to get everything done in in that time and that the rate wasn't really sufficient to uh, to do the work uh, when we received Latiri's proposal which you also have a copy of uh, 
Uh, I, I did let Ann know that we had received their proposal and that if I had misread it as 150. Uh, if you see on here, it does say $150 total, uh, but that's not actually the total. So I let Ann know what we were looking at, that that was the, the price. My intention was to help Ann reach a decision about whether she was going to apply for the position or not. Uh, and I had inadvertently helped her make a decision that she might not otherwise have made. Uh, and then with the Latiris that this is, I see up on the middle of the page, $45 per week for the library, and then it's $150 for the, just the municipal offices apart from the library. So it's a total of $195. Municipal offices and the garages. And the garages, yeah. Municipal. Muni municipal property, I guess. And then the library. For a total of 195. For that, at that rate, would have brought up the number of hours. That would have been something that uh, Anne may have been interested in. So I kind of made, compounded the mistake I had made earlier uh, by setting her up for a misunderstanding or and making a decision that she might not otherwise make. Okay. And, and your letter indicates you're um, writing in the hopes of writing a wrong that has happened. And how, you know, um, what are you looking for in terms of writing that, what you're saying is a wrong? When I went in to talk to Brian, he put the paper, he gave me the paper, I read it, said, well, this is what I did, this is what you're telling me. And I went in and specifically said to him, so you're saying you're going to pay for seven hours at $21 an hour for the most. And he said, yes. I said, it can't be done in seven hours. I know, because I do it. And then when they came up and said, and then it was told they were going to do it for 150 I said, well, that's $3 more power to them, you know. But there's two of them, they can do it in seven hours. But they're not going to get paid much to do it because there's two of them. And I wasn't upset. And then I read it in the paper. This was this paper that it was 195. And I called Brian right up as soon as I read it. And I said, Are they getting me 195? And he said, No. I said, Well, you better not be because if they are, I'm really upset. Because that's not. That's not right. You told me $21.27. That's $147. The difference is 48 bucks. That's not right. And I'm not saying Brian did anything intentionally. I think it was all a mistake. No. But then he calls me into the office and says, well, I was wrong. We are paying $195. But if I look at this contract, it does say $150 right here total. So I don't know why they didn't pay $195. But if they're getting $195, because they need two more hours at the library. That's exactly what I said, was it couldn't be done in seven hours. What I was doing was taking five, and that's just doing the basic stuff. That's not everything else, like cleaning the shelves. I clean these tables every week. You know, I do this stuff every week. I, the bathrooms got mopped every week. The bathrooms got cleaned. All the floors got mopped every week. They've gone weeks without mopping your floors. I don't think they mopped the floor at the shop at all. And yet, you're paying them more than you would have paid me. So I'm upset. That's the wrong. The wrong is that I was given the wrong information three freaking times. And what is the relief you're looking for? I want my old job back. And if they want to do the library and they want to do the shop, they can do it. Board members? We have a contract at this point with the materials. Uh, there's no dates on it. It's not for a specific time period. It's that we can presumably terminate it with a reasonable amount of notice. Do 
you have to copy it from the two pensioners? Yes, you have to copy it from the contract that you signed with? Right, well, yeah, this is a proposal. It's the one you all signed. I don't have a copy of the contract. Okay. It does say proposal at the time? Yes, it's a proposal. And we accepted the proposal. Yes. But we have no. Okay. But Ann is right. It does say $150 total at the bottom. This. If they want to do the whole thing for $150, mm -hmm. they can have it. We asked them to separate the town office and the two garages from the library. They did that. When they wrote total, they meant total for everything except for the part we asked them to separate out, which was the library, which is also on here. But it is separate, but the total package is 195. Yes. And I would think that one should be 195 in that last slot there. It doesn't sound to me like the person doing the work in the town misunderstood uh, other than the representation uh, misunderstood what the total price was. I I misunderstood it. Uh, as you recall, I was actually out on vacation during this time. Uh, Rosemary dealt with the final contract and Rosemary did correctly understand that it was a total of $195. What do the minutes say? And Rosemary conducted the meeting and she had read this correctly. She had not misread it like I did. And I never saw the minutes until last week. We don't actually have a contract, we have a proposal. Is a proposal considered a contract? The proposal is an offer and you have an acceptance. Right. And uh, all due apologies to Michael, I would suggest we send the proposal and the uh, man's letter to our attorney and ask him where we stand. There's no way around it, I guess. There's no date. It doesn't say for a specific period of time. Well, that's why when there are a bunch of questions, one would ask why where we stand. Like, uh, like, uh, how long it runs for? It's a flawed proposal. This doesn't obligate us to a particular duration of time at all. No, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't hazard a guess on it myself. Say that know. again, Doug. I wouldn't hazard a guess on that. I'm making a call on this back then. Okay. Uh, yeah. Much as I hate to say it, we probably should have an attorney help you. But I want to know how you all stand because if you're all against me having it anyway, then why bother? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Either. You know what I mean? Nobody's against you. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if you guys like what you're getting for the money and, and you don't want to go with me, then tell me now so that I don't wait. I love prize on this for me. I don't think there's any question about the kind of job that you did. The question is what options we have. In this, in this circumstance, with this fact pattern, it's not a question of whether you would do a better job or, or they would. Now, we were really, I was very pleased, you know, to the extent I had knowledge and thought we had a substantial upgrade from our prior situation. So that's not the question for me. It's what room do we have to operate in? Other folks? Yeah, I mean, I it definitely, um, in terms of righting the wrong, I mean, I, I think Ann makes a, a great point that, that uh, you know, big, 
mistakes were made here that um, there is a wrong to be there is a wrong there. But on the other hand, now accepting a bid after the jury's bid has been open isn't really fair to them either. But they weren't given the same information as them. I said it could not be done in seven hours. That's that's right. And I was right. <laughs> that's right. I, I know. I'm just saying that, that you now have the advantage of seeing what their bid is. Whereas if we'd done this properly to begin with, no, because we would have had two bids. According to this, the most I could bid was 147. Again, again, if we'd done this properly, that we would have had two bids on the same work from two different parties that they didn't have the advantage of seeing each other's. I was working on the assumption you didn't want the job. No, I always wanted it, but okay. I, I knew I could not do it in seven hours. They do it right. Speaking for myself, I don't know how to respond, but I assume you didn't want the job. So, is there a direction we should give? Is there a motion that we like to sending this to our attorney, asking you to take a look at it, or what do you want to do? That's what you recommended, correct? That's what I would recommend. Well, then I, I move that we send this to our attorney for guidance. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And for the record, the record is recused himself. Can I request the Senate be done as soon as possible? Yeah. Would it be possible the... for the next meeting? Because I need to know if I'm going to close my house up or not. So. Uh, yeah. I can't control how quickly the attorney no. gets back to me, but. Right yeah, we can send it out. Immediately. Thank you. Yeah, it was an unfortunate a bunch of events. To you. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to surrender the was an control of the meeting. A whole bunch of events. <laughs> okay, uh, I would suggest we skip over the executive session. You had a tree removal item you wanted to bring up. Yeah, the uh, dead tree in the plot cemetery. Uh, we've asked for a few bids on removing that uh folks that we've that i've asked to come in uh have declined to take up that job uh, because they you can't get power equipment near the tree uh and if you try and remove the tree uh it's gonna be very easy to damage the grave sites i don't know how familiar you are with the particular location but it's a large dead tree in the, you know, a good 20 feet off the road in the middle of the cemetery. Uh, there's no place to put the tree down. Uh, there's no way to remove it. It's going to be really, really difficult. And most, so far, everybody uh, has con I've contacted hasn't been interested in taking the job. Um, we were approached by uh, Michael's Tree Service. Uh, apparently, Susan has worked with them before. They are interested in the job. Uh, they're estimating two to three thousand dollars to remove the tree. Uh, it is going to come down before too long. Uh, it lost a few limbs over the rainstorm this weekend. Uh, I recommend that we take it up. It's for his pleasure. That's a big chunk of change. Where does it come from? In the budget. Cemetery. Oh, cemetery. Uh, and then we're likely to end up spending a little bit of more cemetery maintenance money repairing. Because uh, it's almost certainly going to end up doing some damage when they remove the tree. Uh, so we'll probably have Duncan or, or somebody else go up and do some repairs afterwards. If we don't remove it, it'll do a lot of damage. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no good solution. Susan? Have you consulted with the tree worker about that? 
uh, not recently, but when it first came up, I, I it, it's a thoroughly dead pine tree. I don't think there's any. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll loop Nolan. It's for his pleasure. Well, this no one has a better idea. I said to go ahead. Okay. I agree. Is that a motion and a second? A uh, motion that we consult with Noel to see if he has a better idea. And if he doesn't, then <laughs> yeah, we go with Max. Did you get a firm price out of it? I, did, I don't think it's a firm price, but I don't think there's any way to get a firm price out of it. It gets. He's going to take it down when it comes down. Does it go exactly where it, it's supposed to, or is it a little bit off? And then how does he drag it out? Uh, again, he can't reach it with any power equipment or the lift. Um, and if it won't come down nicely, then he's going to, I don't know what he's going to be able to do to try and. Uh, do they take those down piecemeal? I, he, they do. I don't think this one's in any shape where someone would want to climb it. And you can't reach it with a lift, so I really don't know what he's going to do if he can. I, I don't think there's a realistic option, not being a tree service person, I don't think there's a realistic option uh, that isn't felling the tree. So they can't get close enough with a boom truck to right. take pieces off of it. So and it's too rotten to climb. We hope he can control the fall. Or our option is just to let it fall on its own. Susan, you see what that tree I believe it's a pine tree. We've had people out a couple times, and uh, for the most part, other folks have declined to take the job. I don't recall specifically. What company does he work with? He's really good, yeah. He's right in front of him. Okay. The name is not familiar, but... Okay, we've got a motion on the floor, a second. Do you want to modify the motion at all? Or? Do you have another option? Well, there was this. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can contact this wild tree scheme. Would or would we rather have a motion that just placed a dollar amount and let Brian research best option? Two, three thousand dollars. Okay. That we have to allocate up to three thousand dollars for the whole of this tree. But other than that, I would accept it. So friendly amendment. You get that, Donna? Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? None. All those in favor of simplifying, saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, unless there's any other old business. I just wanted to say one thing um, that I was at the soccer tournament this weekend. Uh, and Lisa Cruz, our mm -hmm. uh, rec coordinator and crew, did an amazing job. Nice. It went really, really well. Good. I don't think there was a single issue. Good. So, just wanted to. Any other um, can, can I bring up a question that's left here on the agenda tonight? Um, I can't do it without you when we're talking about priorities. And I'm really interested to hear how we're doing, what's happening with the Jewish property. It's we're, been out there for we're still since the meeting. But, and I know it's not going to happen overnight, but is, is and what is happening? We well, have uh, grant proposals out yeah. for. Uh, final engineering and construction bonus. Uh, well, we're, what we're trying to avoid is using town dollars. And we've been going for the grant application. So we were waiting in previous minutes. It mentioned that the Northern Borders grants would be hearing in July, and we didn't get those. Is that right? We actually have not received a uh, a declination. Either. I'm going to have to follow up with them and ask them what the status is. We haven't 
we haven't been awarded the money, but we also haven't received a letter of denial either. Uh, the list I'm aware of was uh, uh, awards related to uh, forestry service. That was one part of it. The other part of it was more community. When I saw a release um, that uh, the governor had, had sent out, we had a list of both sets. Uh, I'm sorry, this is VermontNews.com. Okay. So, you have a point of contact with the state that you can follow up. I got one at, uh, I met the director for the the governor's appointment for the Northern Borders Regional Commission at a uh, meeting I went to for economic opportunity zones a couple of weeks ago. I got his card. Uh, I, I will be following up with him. That's my plan. People are starting to ask about what's going to happen because it was two years ago that the money was appropriated. So it just seems like it's really important now to be talking about what's been done and how it's moving. And even if it's a rejection, it's better than not having any like to keep people informed. And unfortunately, right now, we don't know if we can reject it or approve it. But you know, you know how many grants have been submitted. True. Uh, we did get the first round. Yeah, grant for approval. We did get it. We did not get it. So this was the second, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I guess to keep up the conversation, um, at the economic opportunity zone forum that I was able to attend, uh, I was also able to meet uh, with federal representatives for the EDA, which is the Economic Development Authority. Uh, who we are also attempting to get some money out of, and they are interested in working on projects with the Northern Borders Regional Commission. And I think I might be able to set up a site visit for a future funding round to try and bring both parties together and really start to. We need both their we need both their money so. Mm -hmm. Had an opportunity to meet with both of them together at this conference, I'm hoping that I can turn that into future meetings here in Johnson, where we can kind of show them what we're working on and uh, make it a little more personal. So what I understand Lois and Sue would say is that they think that what we don't know, we, we haven't received a declination on, they think have already been awarded and are out of the game. I... It would not surprise me if everybody who's received money has been awarded that money. Um, I was not aware that they had published a list of, a, a comprehensive list of who had received funds or not, but we, we were expecting to, if we would, if we had received the money, I would have expected us to have heard already. The fact that we haven't heard, I think means that we're not awarded the money. Uh, and if there's a list that's published that doesn't include us, I don't know. Maybe it would be pretty clear. It's pretty clear, even though they haven't actually told us, no, you're not getting the money. I, I just think that it's far enough along in the process that they probably move past us. What um, happened to the pilot program the state was interested in doing on um, industrial? Industrial park designation. Yeah. Um, that one is, I think it's still a really good option for us, uh, but that one, we need the, some of the public infrastructure before we're really going to qualify well for that, uh, that we need the road up there and then we can apply for a master permit that should make it easier for folks that want to develop in there to file on as amendments to our master permit. Uh, it should make things a little bit easier for folks to come in, which would make our property more attractive. 
uh, but it's not something that is really feasible until we can start subdividing the property. We can't really sub we can't effectively subdivide the property and sell it for building until we have a road. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's still where we're stuck is getting a road into it is uh, in the infrastructure. Yeah, the road and the infrastructure is in excess of a million dollars and we need a final engineering on it as well. Cool. The EDA grant we're waiting on, but I'm expecting the EDA grant to be uh, and we might make a modification for that one and submit just for engineering to do the final engineering study and then submit a, another grant for construction money. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with the, the folks from the EDA office. Uh, total number of grants for this project, I would say three. In two years? Yes. Are you all aware of how much anger there is out there about this project? There's a lot. To talk to me. There's talk going around about sending you all the letter demanding an end date and make progress by Section 8. We want you to sell it. Um, there's a lot of anger about this process. Or thinking, you know, we put our taxes on the line almost two years ago, so a year and a half ago. Nothing's happened. And the implication was, you know, we all voted for it, was that we um, you know, they were going to serve the plus and use it. I'm just telling um, because people talk now. It's going to get the fans in the way. I think nobody's more frustrated than us that we can't move this project. But obviously, we're not going to do it with town dollars. We need to get the grant. I shouldn't say. There's been more applications than for three grants. There's been three grants of three grants for construction. We've applied for planning grants. We've applied for other things for engineering, but. Construction money, which is what I think people want, there aren't as many of those available. That we're we're going out for the grants that we have. So, is there a grant now for the engineering? We have one out, but we haven't heard a decision on it. Okay. If you get that grant, what's the answer? Uh, I believe that we qualify for 75-25 for that grant, so it would be 25% match. Well, you have to keep in mind that you're going to be asking folks for the massive grants, but you need to know what's happening, what's going on. Well, typically, we can cover the match in in-kind service. You know, we'll, we'll, some stuff, he administrates it here, uh, well, if it's the actual shovels in the ground, we may do some of the hauling gravel or what have you, but quite quite often our in-kind contribution more than covers our mortgage. Very, very seldom do we have to clump or you know, actually green it out. If I'm not mistaken, this is a way of the soul to the community uh, that we wanted to put it before the voters to buy the property that we would want to seek grants to fund the property. So uh, it's not that we haven't been forthcoming and open with what our intention is. There's, there's no way for people who don't come to the meetings or, or don't think to talk to you folks to know what's going on. So that when you have your updates in the minutes, if it can be some kind of an update, you know, this isn't sent in, it's going to take 90 days and then we'll have something. Just something along the way so that people have the timeline of what's going on. Because now it's just a, a blank hole from the 
the town meeting in March 2018. That's a good point. Yeah, the, the message we're, I think we should take from it is we need to communicate better with, with people out there. Right? Yeah. I don't know if the front porch forum post is the most effective way or press release or something, but we need to maybe have a summary of where we're at. Or at the very least in our town report, before we have a, you know, what have we done so far? Uh, what are we waiting for still? You know, how successful have we been? Well, last year's town report had no mention of what of anything that had happened so far. Yeah. So this year there should really be something. Yeah. Lower page. To it. it could be put on the town website uh, for what has been trying to be accomplished from the time that we the town bought the property to this day. Right. Exactly. And you could just uh, put it there. You think people would go to the town website and, and look at it better, or? Well, I think if you put it in the town report, you'll have a really? lot of, you know, what's going on, and a lot of people will in fact read those. But I also think that there's a lot of people who um, read the minutes or watch it on on uh, cable access. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's different than five years ago, I think, from the people you hear who are following Things related to the minutes. So I think when you're doing the, the updates, maybe, you know, maybe every other month or three months, have a specific mention of what's happening with the Jewett property since it's such a big piece of what the community is looking forward to. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Is there a possibility that Sue could uh, interview Brian and have something in the news and citizen then? Yeah, I have update. In that column, what I see on the minutes, but most of the time, the majority of the time, it's just uh, nothing's happened. Do you think it'd be helpful if you interviewed Brian and got uh, his take on the whole thing and then brought everybody up to speed in paper? Oh, or if you want, Brian, just send me what you think I should know. Yeah, the people who read your column. Oh, everybody reads your column. So. No, that's no joke. It's the first thing I read. Right after the picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked to see if you had anything nasty to say about it. That's all. Uh -huh. <laughs> you guys <laughs> certainly <laughs> <guys, laughs> bring up good points. <laughs> the, the, the dual property, I, I understand, is a big financial purchase. And uh, kind of our, we extended, the community has extended itself to do that. I think there are lots of lots of things in this town that we would all benefit from hearing what we're doing or what we're trying to do. Um, and maybe that's part to be discussed in, uh, in our next dedicated meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think all this will go to, ultimately, when we look at that, we'll have a handle on what we're asking Brian to do, not enough hours in a day. Uh, and why are we here doing, you know, looking at this other stuff? Uh, therefore, it would make sense to prioritize. Absolutely. It's funny, you folks must, must be hearing a lot more than I have. I was going to say, Sue, so you should send those people to us. I don't know why you're doing this. I mean, send them well, away. When we come to you, you relax piece of people on it because some people's attitude is, uh, I don't go to the meetings and say, what can I say I make a difference? And I say, well, what if it will be both? They do what they want anyway. I've okay. heard that so many times. It's a common perception. But then it's like every works. Yeah, there's a population out there who thinks uh, forget it. And then I say, what about your tax bill? Oh, they have tons of complaints about that. They won't vote on the school board and they won't vote on the taxes. You know, I mean, never mind the whole racist thing. <laughs> You need to have a problems of democracy meeting and educate people on how these things work. It's all very basic, and, and I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. It's alright, I can't be here next week, but we're doing it. Oh, you won't be? Um, you don't schedule it for tonight, Eric. This is why. That's why I think it's schedule it. I mean, this is for the community. Well, uh, when we scheduled it two months ago, uh, you know, walked in. Happening in two months, that, that's a problem we run into. There's just all those things getting dumped on us. Right, but then there's a lack of letting the public know, which is not fair. I can't stand it when that happens to me. 
I mean, I understand the public didn't know, but my, my opinion is that we didn't hold we didn't hold true to the course and say this was a dedicate. We moved this stuff back again. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. That's okay. All right. Anything else? Okay. I didn't have an extra ask some questions. I would entertain a motion to go into an executive session for employee performance. Somebody would like to read it. Mike, yeah. you, you typically do that. Yeah. And we'll be going to executive session to discuss employee performance as allowed under one VSA 313A3. We have a motion to the second. 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 Any more discussion? All those favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Show us at 926. Ah.